Hey monsters, it's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for our weekly true crime cult meeting. But not to worry, you've landed in the cult with all of the flower crowns and none of the flavor aid. In case you're just discovering the show, allow us to introduce ourselves. I'm Aurora, and I'm here with my favorite true crime fighting pixie, Angelina. And today we're joined by Carly's sister, Katie Langley, who is fighting for justice for Carly, who was killed by a drunk driver on May 2nd, 2024. Welcome, Katie. Hi, guys. How are things doing with you? Uh, Thanks for having me today. I mean, I'm hanging in there doing the best I can, but uh, Mm -hmm. I do appreciate you guys sharing your platform with me today and letting me come on tell her story. Great to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for doing that. I know these things are not easy to deal with, and it's so recent that I'm sure you haven't had time to process everything. So thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for sure. Well, for those of you who are new to Carly's case, here's a little bit of background. 27-year-old Carly was a proud mother to her three-year-old, Riot. Around 3.10 p.m. on May 2nd, Carly was picked up for work in a Ford Explorer at her home in Smithton, Illinois, by an acquaintance, Jake. Carly would soon be made aware that Jake was driving under the influence, and witnesses reported that Carly was scared and trying to get out of the car. We've heard that Carly was an artistic free spirit who loved tie-dye. Katie, can you tell us some more about what Carly was like as a person? Yeah, um, definitely free spirits a way that I would describe her. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the best way to sum it up would be her Facebook bio, which is uh, may we raise children who love the unloved things, uh, the dandelions, the worms, and the spiderlings. And... That's just so Carly. Um, Before she was a mom to Riot, she was a mom to her tens of spiders. I don't know how many she exactly had, but each of her little spiders had enclosures. And she she just loved the unloved, as she would put it. Um, I just remember as kids, just she was never afraid to go pick the thing up, no matter what it was. I I just remember like catching tadpoles and crawling through like drainage tunnels and just every every day was an adventure with her for sure what kind of spiders did she have jumping spiders i'm not that's so interesting but she had a bunch of little baby jumping spiders and she had little enclosures that she made all little special like playgrounds inside of it's so cute they're they're all so cool her child's father of them so like as her sister how did you feel about that I'm not a huge spider fan. Um, <laughs> lately, if I see one in the apartment, I will have my boyfriend grab it and let it go outside. Whereas, like, in the past, I wasn't always so friendly to the spiders. But now, oh. I, I, I try to be more understanding. They just were never my thing. But they were hers. That's an amazing thing that uh, Carly has uh, opened your mind about, I guess. Just now you're uh, thinking twice about the spider. <laughs> Praying mantises. Um, we had little rats growing up. Um, anything and everything. She just, yeah, that's what she, that's who she was. Just a friend to all, a friend to everything. She, just, <laughs> she wasn't scared of anything as far as that. She loved nature. She loved being outside, and that's how she was raising Riot. They would be outside together all the time, and that's he's not afraid of dirt or anything either. And he reminds me of his mom so much. Oh, so sweet. And do you have any special memories you could share with us about Carly? So many, so many from like every stupid argument we've ever had to every time we've ever done anything together. She was just my person. Like we had the same face. I mean, I have a picture of her right here. This is, we have the same face. Like, Mm-hmm. Everything so yeah. similar. Yeah, she was she's my big sister, but she's like up to here on me. So I mean we <laughs> came to play for everything, like any little stupid fight we ever had. It's just we always had each other's backs, like and that's what I always told her, like up in the last conversation we had was four days before everything happened and one of the last things I told her was like, I'm your sister and I'll defend you with my last dying breath. Like I love you and that's how we worked to each other. Like we weren't super 
touchy feely. Like one of the last times I saw her alive, we gave each other a hug and like she made a joke like it's probably only the fourth time we've ever hugged in our lives. And she's not wrong because we weren't very touchy feely, but like we had that understanding that we had each other's back no matter what. Always. So cute. She was saving her affection for the spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Katie, you've mentioned that Carly had sort of hidden her acquaintance with Jake from you because she knew you weren't a fan of his. Um, were there any particular red flags for you about your sister hanging out with him that stuck out? Yeah, just because she wasn't exactly being honest about her friendship with him. Um, she was still living with her child's father and they're still like a family, whether they were romantically together or not. It just... There were things she wasn't exactly being honest about that got exposed over Facebook by somebody else who was involved with him. And that's when I texted her and was like, hey, why are you hanging out with him, Carl? Like, what are you doing? And her and I went back and forth about it for days and days and days. And the last time we talked about it was four days before she died. And in the middle of our conversations, it's like paragraph, paragraph, paragraph of us going back and forth. Me saying, hey, I have a coupon at Target. Do you need me to get Riot a car seat? I could get a car seat. I could get a stroller. It's a BOGO deal. She's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And then back to, why are you hanging out with him? What are you doing? And uh, she knew I wasn't a fan. I knew him for years before she knew him. She knew him from, he was the cousin of one of her friends. And they all ran around together in the same group. And she told me that, like, when I, could, like, I guess, confronted her about, hanging out with them, she was just like, well, I try to stay away from him because of what you said, but he's so-and-so's cousin, and I would see him sometimes. I just want to get to know him for myself, and it's just, just Carly being Carly. She's, as much as I love her, a very stubborn individual. She's a, a fixer. She sees the best in people. She always thinks that she can change somebody, and she's just very much that person, and one of the things she said was, I don't want to abandon him. He's living in his car, yada yada mm -hmm. and she wanted to fix his situation even though it's like i told her she needed to prioritize herself she needed to prioritize riot but she's seen the best in everybody and she wanted to give him a chance and i could not say why i i could not say why i don't know wow i could really see that about her personality well, on May 2nd, Jake picked Carly up at her home around 3.10 p.m. to take her to work in Fairview Heights, about 25 minutes away. Do you have a sense of what the plan might have been for the afternoon and what time Carly had to be to work? So she had to be at work at 4, and she doesn't even typically work on Thursdays. She picked up a shift, um, and her best friend from work happened to text her child's father, which is just like, out of the ordinary for her not to show up to work, you know, like, it's not like her, especially for her best friend, not to know for her child's father, not to know for me, not to know for my mom, not to know. Um, we just knew that she was supposed to be there around four and her child's father's stepmother who they live with, um, saw her leave at like three Oh eight, three ten, And she was supposed to be there at four. So I figured maybe they were going to, talk, whatever. And part of me hopes deep down inside that maybe the reason why she wanted him to take her to work because her best friend from work offered to take her to work that day. She wanted him to take her. Part of me deep down hopes inside that maybe that was her trying to say like, hey, we can't do this anymore. Like I'm done. And maybe that's why he started driving erratically. I don't know. I wasn't in the car, but just a part of me very much like I feel it in my bones that that's what was going on. She was just done with the back and forth that she was getting all of the pushback she was getting from everybody around her saying, stay away from him. I think that maybe that was her saying like, we shouldn't do this anymore. And I don't know though. That's just my hypothesis of why he started driving the way he did. Um, so you've mentioned that Carly was scared to be in the car with Jake. Um, can you tell us, more about what you know about that drive um, as you've heard from witnesses. Yeah. And it's like, did I know specifically to Carly say she was scared to be in the car with him to me directly? No, but Carly was scared to be in the car with anybody. Carly was scared to be in the car by herself. Carly was scared to be in the car with me. Like she was scared to be in the car. She had PTSD from being in two other accidents where she had been in a rollover accident where she, oh, wow. she didn't get hurt from that accident, but it was scary. 
Um, and then she'd been in another accident where an off duty firefighter hit her um, when she had the right of way. He hit her and totaled her brand new car. So her PTSD with driving was strong. And she had even said to her child's father, she's like, I feel like if I get in another accident, I'm going to die because it, it just kept happening. And she's just like, it's, it's too coincidental that I keep having near misses like this. So she was scared to be in the car with anybody, not just him. Mm -hmm. But I know if that's the way that he was driving, that she was scared for her life. There's no way that she wasn't. She's, she's the type of person where if everybody in the car doesn't have their seatbelt on, she will pull over. She won't leave the driveway. Like she's not the type to get in the car and be like, woo, like I want to drive fast and dumb. She's so not like that. She's the type of person where we'd be driving to Walmart and somebody would be driving stupid next to her and she'd be screaming, I have a baby in the car! Like, she, she's not the type to condone that type of driving or behavior whatsoever. So I don't think she knew that... It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't think she knew that he was as drunk as he was. I don't mm -hmm. think she knew what she was getting into. And I do know that she called 911. Um, so I know that she was trying to get out of the car. Okay. And, um, I, I, we've heard some, uh, witness reactions that they, uh, they saw some things that, uh, they could tell that, uh, Carly didn't want to be in the car. Yeah. Um, so the yeah. day after it happened that the, one of the people who's seen talked to my aunt, I think they work in the same building. Um, but she told my aunt what happened, what she saw that same lady reached out to me just the other day. Um, with that story, she said that she went to the police with the story. She gave a testament. Uh, but what she told me was that she was driving in one lane. They were driving the other lane. Um, and out of nowhere, she just looks up and the car is coming straight for them. And she sees blonde hair. <sighs> drive, grab the wheel. And that's the last thing she's seen before the car went airborne and flipped over. And she told me that she fully believes in her heart that Carly saved her life that day. Um, and I have no reason not to believe her. So I believe what she saw. You mentioned that Carly called 911 from the car, which is a pretty clear indicator that something was very wrong in that car for her to have called the police. Can you share any details about that 911 call? So I have not heard the call personally. I know when that day comes, it's going to be one of the hardest things that I'll ever have to do. Um, but I did get confirmation. I can't say from who or where. But from sources who did hear the call, that that call happened um, and that that call was being recovered. And we will hear that call. I haven't heard it yet. And I just I don't think I'm ready to. But I know that it exists and I know that it happened. And uh, authorities have reported that Jake was driving under the influence. And you mentioned that as well. Um, he was speeding. He was driving recklessly. Um, can you talk uh, a bit more about that? Yeah. Um, so from what I know, he was coming down North Illinois Street, which anybody from this area knows that that's just not really an area to speed in. It's So Swansea is just known for its police presence it's known for you you'll get caught in Swansea speeding it's a speed trap it's yeah. wild so when I heard that they were going as fast as they were I before I knew that alcohol was involved I was so perplexed like you don't go that fast in that area so to hear that he was going over 70 is beyond me um uh, to hear that multiple people called 911, not just Carly. It was multiple people calling to report the erratic driving. Because uh, it's a straight shot from where they were coming from. It's a straight shot. So they had to have driven, like, right past the police department. So, wow. but even if the police were to get in their car or have their light on, I don't believe that he would have stopped. I think he was going to keep mm -hmm. going. I Like I said, I wasn't in the car, but... If I know my sister, she can get under someone's skin. She probably said something to him that made him say, oh, yeah, well, I'll kill us both. And I don't know. That's not confirmed. But that's just how I feel. Because right. what else are you doing driving that fast? Like, that makes no sense to me. I'm beyond perplexed. But I was told that the driver supposedly remembered nothing when he woke up. But mm. um, I was also told that 
he had won $2,000 from gambling the night before. And the first words out of his mouth when he woke up was, where's my $2,000 at? So no concern for, there was other vehicles hit as well. It wasn't just my sister. My sister was the only death from this. It wasn't an accident. The, the crash, uh, mm -hmm. but other people were injured. They were just taken to local hospitals. Whereas the driver was, had to be airlifted and taken to a hospital in St. Louis, which is right across the river from us. Um, but with it being over state lines, it's a whole other obstacle and then a whole other can of worms um, now that we're dealing with two states. So the street that they were driving down, uh, you mentioned that it was a 35 mile an hour area. He was driving yeah. 70. Is it like stoplights? Is it busy? Are there pedestrians? Like what is that area like? Um, that's where most of the businesses are in this area. So like they were heading towards Fairview Heights where Carly worked. Uh, Fairview Heights is where all of most of the businesses around here are. It's where the shopping mall is, a lot of restaurants. So very busy, very busy. Wow. Wow. So responders arrived at the crash site around 4.30 p.m., a little over an hour after Carly left her home. How were you notified about what happened to Carly? I was still texting Carly's phone um, until like 7.40 at night. I didn't know. Um... I was still texting her saying, like, Carly, come on. There's too much stuff going on in this area, like sex trafficking and people going missing. Like, Carly, wherever you're at, just tell us, like, answer your phone. Because I just, I didn't believe that anything else was happening other than Carly could be hard-headed sometimes and maybe she just didn't want to answer the phone. Maybe, but it's just, like, I knew deep down something was wrong because I saw... An accident was reported on Facebook and there was a road closure on Illinois 159 where the accident happened. And I just saw the comments. Someone said a lady died and not that it would have been okay for anyone to die. But when I read lady, I thought like older lady, I, I just wasn't thinking my sister. I wasn't thinking that that was it, but I, I knew that that accident happened and I just, something was telling me something was wrong. And I just kept texting her saying like, please just tell us where you're at. Just tell us where you're at. Like, what's going on? I, I don't know where you're at. You didn't show up to work. Like Carly, what's going on? And that was going on until 7.30 at night. Wow. But 7.30 was when you finally found out about Carly? Um, about 10 minutes after I texted her, I'm getting a Facebook Messenger call. I don't use Facebook Messenger to call people. Everybody that I talk to has my number. The mm -hmm. call is coming from the driver's best friend and mm -hmm. I don't talk to him, but I know that he's involved with the guy that my sister was supposedly hanging out with. So I answer the call and he's like, Katie, do you know where your sister is? And I'm like, do you know where my sister is? And he's kind of going back and forth. He's like, do you really not know where your sister is? And I'm like, no. I'm like, can you tell me where she's at? Like, I've been calling her. My mom's been calling her. Where is she? He interrupts me and he says, your sister's expletive dead. Uh, wow. And I basically just said, like, what? And I just said, what do you know? Like, what hospital? What, like, what are you talking about? Are you sure? He's like, oh, I, I'm not sure. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I hang up and I immediately call 911 and I'm in St. Louis. I'm, I'm closer to where the hospital that they took the driver to is than where the accident happened. So I'm calling around, figure out where I need to be. Um, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm a manager. There's my team members are walking past me and I'm like, I'm trying to keep it together and I'm freaking out. <laughs> so I go into an office, I lock the door and I just kind of start breaking down. Um, I call 911 because it's just my first instinct. To, I, I don't know why. I wasn't thinking clearly. But I call 911 and St. Louis police answer. Um, and they're basically just like, we can't help you. This is St. Louis. You need to call Swansea. So I called Swansea. Um, I, I think I called SLU somewhere in the mix of this. I called the hospital that the driver was taken to. Um and they basically just asked how I knew the driver. And I said, I mean, I don't really know the driver, but I believe my sister was in the vehicle. 
they told me to call Swansea police. I call Swansea police. They put me on hold. Um, they can't really tell me anything. I'm on hold for longer and longer. The music reloops itself. This, the jazz music they're playing. And I'm just, I know something's wrong because you don't get put on hold that long if, it's, if nothing's wrong. So they come back to the phone. Um, they ask me for my parents' address and my parents' names and numbers. I give them my mom's number. I give them their address. And then I try to intercept because I know what's about to happen. So I call my dad as fast as I can. And I said, dad, do you know what's going on? And he said, well, I'm just worried to death about your sister right now. I'm like, she's not answering and no one can get a hold of her. And I just say, dad, she's been in an accident and I did. I need you to listen to me. And then I just hear screaming. The worst scream I've ever heard in my life. It replays in my head every day. And that's when I knew. That's when I knew that it was real. And I knew. So then they sent the police and a priest to my parents' house. And my parents were in so much shock that they weren't the nicest to those the police that had to come out that night and they are so sorry, but they told them to get the F out of their house. And my dad was just mm -hmm. not in the right state of mind, but that's, yeah. that's how we found out. I had to call the hospital. I had to call two different police departments. I had to call and call and sit on hold. And I found out from that. Wow. Your call. Wow. Um, and so the site of the accident also was horrifying. Um, the Ford Explorer had been flipped after being airborne as evidence of how fast the car had been going in a 35 mile per hour zone. Um, Carly's cause of death was determined to be a brain injury and injuries were so severe that she was nearly unrecognizable. Um, how was your family asked to identify her body? They really weren't. Um, it's not that they said that we couldn't, but they just kind of told my mom, you don't want to, um, mm. the coroner called and they just told my parents, you don't want to see her. And mm -hmm. my dad said, that's the hardest thing he's ever had to hear is you don't want to see her. <laughs> but that's, that's what they said. They said, you can see her if you would like to, but you don't want to. So they just said, what tattoos did Carly have? And my mom said she had an alien on her back. That she had a praying mantis on her thigh. I, th I think it was on her thigh. She had a praying mantis tattoo and she had an alien tattoo. And they said, okay, that's all we needed to know. Cause I mean, those are pretty unique tattoos. Not everybody has an alien and a praying mantis. Um, yeah. They said that's all we really needed to know. And my mom just said, okay. Cause that's what I, when I was calling, I said, do I need to go to SLU? Do I, where, where do I need to go? Where do I need to go? Um, and my dad just said, Katie, there's no point. She's gone. And I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's never, I've never been through that before. I just, I don't, I don't know. So we didn't go and see her because none of us wanted to have that be our last memory of her. And I don't think she'd want us to either. So oh, nobody saw her other than the coroners and the people who were at the crash site taking pictures. So. And that's probably a good thing. Yeah. <sighs> people at the crash site taking pictures. Yep. Oh my god, that's yeah. They got posted on Facebook and yeah. What? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow, that's that is so disgusting. I'm so sorry. And like I didn't yeah. know. I saw one of our old neighbors comment on that post saying, "I hope to God that the family doesn't have to see those photos. Those were horrible." And I, I texted her and I said, "Kaylin, that was Carly." And she, wow. she saw them. She saw the pictures, and she said that's gonna oh. scar her forever. So that girl was like a that's sister to us. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Anyone listening to this, if you ever see something like this happen, don't do that. That's, that's just that's terrible. Disgusting. Very insensitive. It's so Ugh. insensitive. I just and considering how long it took you to find out what was going on, I mean, it it sounds likely that you could have come across something oh, yeah. like this as your first, you know, if I notice like, of the situation. If I wasn't at work, I would have definitely saw those on Facebook. Oh my god! Wow, <sighs> like it's just shocking. Like I'm so sorry that your yeah. family had to go through like being re-traumatized and just like to think that other people are like looking at that too in such a like, yeah exploitative way 
Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, Jake was allegedly two times over the legal limit to operate a vehicle and was driving erratically, clearly. Was he arrested at the crash site? No, um, because he was unconscious. So they airlifted him to a hospital, um, but he's fine. I've personally seen his injuries because he recorded a video of them uh, that got back to me. He's fine. He wasn't even in casts. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he was, but it's been, what, like 40? It was been way over 40 because it was 40 whenever I went to the media initially. Um, but he's not in casts anymore. Uh, he's been... And he's not been arrested? Nope. He's been out bowling. Um, he got his hair cut. Like, everybody sees him out and about. He's been supposedly, allegedly at bars. I don't know if that's true. That's just what has been said. Wow. Speculation. Whatever. But, um, yeah, I've been told that they've people have seen him out at the bowling alley. And him and his friends were hanging out. And it was, like, seemed more like a celebration. They were just hanging out. So... Yeah, he God. gets to uh, see his son. He has um, children. He's got a baby on the way, and he's got a, a son, uh, what have you. But, yeah, he got to spend Father's Day with his son. Carly's funeral was the day before Mother's Day. Uh, wow. Yeah, and he's still just, you know, sleeping in his own bed and at home doing what he wants to do. So, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's... Uh... As we understand it, in Illinois, a DUI um, resulting in death could face charges such as involuntary manslaughter, reckless homicide, and aggravated DUI. And uh, none of these charges have been brought against Jake? That's just nothing as of yet? As of yet. I mean, they're in the process. Um, but with the fact that he did get transported to the hospital across state lines, now we're dealing with two states. So... So everything's slower. Unfortunately, yeah. So he's gotten real comfortable. Um, I pray that they are coming. I mean, in the beginning, the chief of police, detectives, like everybody was super great. It's just the updates kind of stopped coming. And I'm not saying that they're not working on this case. I'm not saying that they're not doing everything that they can. I hope and I pray that they are. It's just to me personally, having to sit through Mother's Day, Father's Day without my sister, knowing that the person who caused her death is still just comfortably at home, getting to see his friends and live his life. Um, it bothers me, especially since the person responsible has made a mockery of it um, and has personally came to my Facebook and commented yawning emojis and whatnot on my page. Um, it bothers me a lot. The fact that that's even possible. If you kill somebody, I don't think that you should be allowed that much freedom injured or not. Well, even through the horror of saying goodbye to Carly, the trouble is far from over. Can you tell us a bit about the harassment you've all endured since Carly's death? It was ongoing for weeks after her death it started before she died of that's how i found out that she was involved with jake the driver um was because she was getting her name ran through the mud that she was a whore and she's a hoe and a raggedy ann or whatever they called her um it was going on before she died and then even after her death was still being called a hoe and blamed for her own death and people saying that she shouldn't have been messing with Jake and blah, 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 blah. Um, she shouldn't have got in the car, yada, yada, yada. It went on and on and on. The most notable thing I remember being said to my family was it's been over a month since old girl passed. Um, get over it essentially is what was said oh, by some of the drivers goodness. in our circle said that to us. And then the driver himself so it's was you. commenting and t he was taunting our older brother, um, basically saying like, you're not going to touch me, tough guy to my, to our older brother, who's also grieving the loss of his little sister. And, and my brother has a three-year-old daughter. And that's what he replied to Jake was, 
we actually care about the children in our family. We're not going to touch you because we're not, we don't want violence. We don't want any of that. That's not what any of this was about. It's about getting justice for Carly. Like that's literally all this was ever about. We don't want the violence. People have threatened to fight me, my best friends, because I block account after account after account and they just keep popping up and popping up and popping up and it's fight me, fight me, fight me. And I'm like, why would I, why would I need to fight you when my sister's dead? That's not going to bring her back. And that's not what I want. I want to share her story. I want to spread awareness. And the only reason why I even stooped to the level of responding to these people was because I felt like the narrative around the story was getting spun so far out of control to the point where people are blaming her for her death that mm -hmm. had to say something. Some That's not what happened, and I know what happened, and it's you're not going to blame her for something that she had no control over. And so these are uh, friends and family members and close people to um, Jake the driver that are harassing you. Oh, yeah. Um, and I guess as, as you all um, sort of traveled in circles where he was – you know, around, um, and you, I guess, knew who he associated with. Was that part of the whole, in the beginning when you were like, oh, he's, you know, no good, you know, you don't need to be spending time with him. Was it like you just, all of that, you know, I you knew, knew all of these him people? From him cheating on his previous girlfriends, his, um, every girl I've ever heard of him being with, he's cheated on and okay. what have you. Um, I personally knew him because we had PE together in high school. He was a grade younger than me, okay. and we had uh, a softball game, a wiffle ball game, whatever, in PE. And the PE teacher said, like, if anybody lets the bat out of their hands, they're going to get benched. And Jake comes up, he swings the bat, and he lets it out of his hands, and it hit me in the leg. And I didn't care. Like, it, was, it didn't hurt. But the PE teacher just said, like if you let the bat out of your hands, you're getting benched. So the PE teacher yelled like, no, like sit down. You're not running. I just like blah, blah, blah. And Jake threw a little tantrum because he didn't get to go run out his base hit because he just hit me with a wiffle ball bat. There's no accountability. Like, no, no, no. And obviously no, no. a bit of rage problem. He was like almost in tears about a wiffle ball PE game. So that's when I knew I just would never, ever like him ever like mm. it's just that it was the immaturity was glaring like the lack and, uh, of empathy you, like just wow yeah. like somebody's actually been physically hurt in the situation and you're upset oh, that yeah, you can't you're just run to a on base yourself. like what yeah. in the world like what, what? He's put on his arms up and he's like almost tears in his eyes i'm just like this is mm. evil emotional maturity is yeah astounding <laughs> And just an aside, because I don't think you mentioned this earlier, but um, he has um, uh, prior charges and stuff as well. Is that right? Oh, yeah. His record started years ago. He's only 23. Um, on paper, this is his fourth DUI when it finally gets filed. Um, wow. But yeah, he's only 23. He's on his fourth DUI on paper. Um, his friend, the one that told me that my sister was effing dead, uh, actually confirmed that they were let go by the New Athens Police Department whenever they were drinking and driving last time. So this would have been his fifth had that one been filed, but on paper it's his fourth. So really how, you shouldn't have even had a license. Yeah, oh, like, I was going to say, like, I don't know how that works in Illinois, but, like, how, he like, doesn't you would have think a you... No. He was, oh, no. Okay. No license, okay. no registration on the car, no insurance, no, nothing. He okay. was not supposed to have that car. Okay. Whose car was it? He bought it from his... They were formerly friends, but they're not now, as far as I know. Um, okay. But supposedly the license plates were left on it from them. And it never wow. came over. But then after everything happened, he went and said that it was still their car. Got them in trouble with insurance, whatnot. Um, and I, oh, I'm like, nice friend. yeah, I talked to them personally, the, the former owners of the car. Um, mm -hmm. I have no ill will against them, but I like, that's how it happened. He got the car from them. The plates were still on it. And then he tried to blame them and say it was still their car, but he paid $1,500 for that car in March. Wow. Yeah. 
All right. Um, so can you share your impressions about how Carly's case is being handled and like the kind of response that you've received from the detectives that are handling it? The last time the detective gave an update was Monday and that was to my mom. Um, I have his number. He has mine. And we were conversing a lot more frequently. I would say he was kind of updating me more in the beginning. Um, but the last thing I said to him was that I was going to the news whenever I had the news come to my house and we did a story. I let him know that that was going on. Uh, I didn't get a response. I believe he was out of town at that time. Um, but I still haven't, I haven't talked to him since before I went to the media. Um, mm -hmm. But he talked to my mom on Monday and he's basically just said that they're still waiting on to get records from state lines because of the two states, he's got to go over there and it's just a whole, I don't, I'm not sure. I would hope and pray that they're handling it with as much urgency as possible. However, the reason why I have made such a big deal about this, it's a, it's a huge deal. I'm not saying it's not, it's more so like for the first month after I didn't do, I didn't do any of this. I didn't go talk about it. I didn't say anything. I kept very quiet, but it's just kind of like the longer I was waiting, the more I felt that even if there was a chance that this would ever get swept under the rug, I couldn't sleep at night. I was physically ill every single day, throwing up every morning. I was physically ill all the time thinking that this could ever get swept under the rug, not saying that it was going to, but mm -hmm. It was more so like I couldn't just sit there knowing everything that I knew and let people spin the story how they were. And yeah. so I do feel like the investigators, the detectives, everybody is trying to handle it as best as they can. Um, mm -hmm. And they haven't said so many details publicly. It's all kind of came out on its own. And I never even publicly released the identity of the driver. Um, all of his friends did on Facebook whenever they were sending him condolences and what wow. whatnot. So, like, it wasn't really me. The story got out there on its own. And then all I did was come in and, like, correct what was being said. So, mm -hmm. the story was starting to get out there on its own. Um, do I feel like more could have been done as far as why do people have photos of my sister's corpse? Why was she sitting there long enough for that to happen? Why was nothing done about that? Um, I have a lot of questions. Um, yeah. But I have to trust that they're doing everything that they can. However, I just felt like I needed to do everything that I could as far as using my voice. Because what if it got swept under the rug and then... Riot grows up, my nephew, he grows up and he's looking at us like, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you do something? I can't, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything until I got the story out there. And that's what I've been trying to do is just get the story out there and let people know what happened and who Carly was and try to bring honor to her name while people were trying to tarnish her reputation even after she was deceased. I just could not sleep as that was happening and I, and I couldn't let it go on anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And for you, what would justice for Carly look like? I want laws changed. I would love to see that happen. I would love for no one else to ever have to go through something like this ever again. And then to have to know that the person responsible is able to remain free for so long afterwards Something has to change. I don't know how we've gotten to the point where that is accepted or okay. Um, or how that's even possible, to be honest with you. It just, it's, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't even formulate complete sentences because it is that much beyond me that I don't understand how this is the reality that my family's been faced with. And I pray that nobody else ever has to be in the situation that we've been put in. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you're looking into changing laws because I was doing just a little bit of research for this to see what the laws were like in Illinois, um, to see what charges he might face. And I'm in Texas at the moment. So my computer automatically pulled up Texas laws, which are much more severe than Illinois. Uh, They don't have like actually vehicular homicide as a possibility in Illinois. Like it's a downgraded charge from that and it's like wow why why isn't it called homicide like <laughs> what, yeah. what why is this like this, this is homicide like he i think to some extent knew what he was doing in driving the well, way he that knew what he, he was, was doing and getting into that car in the first place and getting where, into like the car. he wasn't supposed to be there and, and, and we can only- four other times he probably wouldn't have felt so comfortable doing it again and again and yeah again and right. again. i just don't know how that's possible yeah. No, and I would think that not having well, like not having insurance is a huge um, crime as well, and then not having a license, like all of these things, didn't lead to yeah. like an immediate arrest is like just alarming because obviously just taking his license is not enough to stop him from doing no. these things again because right. he he physically He's can. Been He's with going fire to fire all along and getting away with it, and mm-hmm. we know inside of the car things must have been somewhat chaotic. Somebody saw. They almost had a head-on collision, and Carly yeah. had grabbed the wheel. She called 911. Also, mm-hmm. uh, I know from having talked to you before, Katie, that her window was down, and I can't help but think that she it was some kind of like was method for find a way escape. Out. Yeah, like we, yeah. we don't know what was going on, and we can't know that for sure, but that doesn't sound great to me. So one and the fact that this one before I even knew all of the details, like I woke up the next morning on May 3rd, every fiber of my being in my bones and my blood, everything told me that this was intentional. So I emailed the chief of police of Swansea the next morning and said, I need this investigated as thoroughly as possible. I know that this was intentional. And this was before I even knew all of the details. I just knew the type of person yeah. that the driver was. I knew going 70 miles an hour in Swansea. I, I, before I knew all the details, I woke up the next morning and I emailed the chief of police and I said, something is wrong. This is not an accident. This is not an accident. And I hate that it's even been referred to as an accident because it's intentional. Um, so what can our listeners and our viewers on YouTube um, do to help you get justice for Carly? Even just listening to her story, sharing, just spreading the word, just getting her name out there. It means so much to all of us. It means the most just knowing that people are listening and that people care. Mm-hmm. That's all we could even ask for. Right. If you're in Illinois, right. Our senators, Uh, we just have to keep doing what we can. And I hope that if the story even just affects one person to rethink their decisions of go out to bars, go have fun, go do what you have to do, but be smart, make smarter decisions, have a designated driver. Think about other people. Don't be so selfish because you don't know what your actions can cause. My nephew has to grow up without his mom now. I don't have my sister anymore. My parents lost a daughter. Like you never know what your actions will directly cause for somebody else. So you cannot be so selfish with your decisions. And I feel like nowadays people have become more and more selfish and more and more negligent and just not thinking of what can happen and the worst. And we never thought that this would happen to us. I never thought that I'd be here talking about my sister. It can happen to anybody. This could have been, this could have been anyone. This could have been me. This could have been you. This could have been anyone. So Mm -hmm. if I could say anything from the story getting out there, I hope it could just change someone's mind the next time that they're out being careless and drunk. Absolutely. Get an Uber, find a safe ride home. So many cities also have free transportation after a certain hour, even if there's not like, you know, like if you're not in New York or someplace with trains, but where I was living in uh, Florida, there was even services you could call that would give a free ride. I know in Austin, Texas, where I am now, it's the same thing. So like, look it up before you go out, plan ahead Mm -hmm. and do not freaking drive drunk. Like it's, it's terrifying, like what could happen. So find a safe ride. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's nothing to play with. Very serious consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And, very um, easy to plan a little bit ahead. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, very much so. It's going to be them because they've done it so many times and yada, yada. They've always been fine. Exactly. But... <laughs> it could be you in an instant. You never know. It could be four in the afternoon. It could be four in the morning. It could always be you. You have to be diligent. You cannot just make impulsive decisions. You have to think about others and i hope have empathy for others but not everyone does yeah and in fact like if people have uh, been drinking and driving before and have always been fine then statistically <laughs> you're probably running out of chances so point. like <laughs> let's not do this again <laughs> like absolutely well, thank you so much, Katie, for uh, coming and doing this. While things are obviously still so raw, this is, uh, you know, far from over and um, very uh, intense um, stuff that you've been going through. But thank you for sharing and for sharing the story. Since recording this episode, there's been a big update in the case. The driver of the vehicle, Jacob Hall, has been arrested and is being held without bond. He has been charged and is waiting trial in jail, but things don't end here for Carly's family. They're hoping it sticks, that Jacob remains held without bond, and he is not under any conditions released. This is not Jacob's first DUI, so it's especially crucial that he is held accountable for his reckless behavior that resulted in Carly Langley's death. So please do what you can to help get the word out. Make sure Jacob stays in jail. We've talked again to Katie and to her best friend, Taylor, about what we can do to help. We made a TikTok and a Instagram reel that you can help share, but really anything you can do, just talking about the case, sharing this, sharing anything about their story would be so helpful. Mm -hmm. Every little bit helps for sure. And I guess uh, that's enough true crime for one week. If uh, you just can't get enough MMN, you can find us on all the socials. You can find us on Instagram at MMN True Crime, on Twitter at M Murder News, on TikTok at MMN True Crime, and on Facebook just by searching for Murdered and Missing News. And while you're there, you can also join our Facebook group, which will also pop up when you search for Murdered and Missing News. If you like what you've been hearing on the podcast or watching on YouTube, let us know by leaving us a comment, a like, a subscribe, and maybe go the extra mile and leave our show a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We super appreciate the feedback. Have a great week. See you next Friday. Bye, spooky friends. Bye.